I think when I was young, like when I was an adolescent, I, I really didn't want to know from Yiddish. I mean, it's, it's just, but once I started, um, I went to um, New York. I was at, at Columbia for a while. And there was a job opening uh, at NYU in adult education, a teacher of Yiddish. And I always figured, I can do that. So um, without really realizing that my Yiddish was Yiddish of a child, basically. So I got, a, I got the job. I got the job on the basis of the person who, who interviewed me also didn't know Yiddish. So he said, um, so he, this one guy said to me, how do you say oranges in Yiddish? And I said, Pomeranzen. And this guy turns to the one who was hiring me and said, boss, she's the real thing. Because he thought I would say oranges, right? So I, I knew it was Pomeranzen. So I got the job. And then I had to teach Yiddish. I, my, I, my basis for Yiddish was fine. It was... But it was that's all it was. There was nothing there. So I had to teach myself. And in teaching myself, because I had to teach others, I started to get more involved with the language and more interested. And then uh, while I was at Columbia, I took a course with uh, Barbara Kirschenbluth, um, Gimblet, on uh, Yiddish, Yiddish folklore. And I loved it. And I loved it. I, I really I loved the whole thing. And so instead of turning my back on it, I, I really started to come back. But I never, I'll never forget the way I got this job. I mean, that was not the way you should hire a and, and it also, it illustrates how, uh, what had happened with the language. That, you know, that that, that would be a, a job interview for a Yiddish teacher. One word? <laughs> you know, it was...